media can, uh, can put up hurdles. But do you think that uh, traditional media will be able to put up uh, hurdles permanently in this network-based economy? Well, what, what, here's what's going to happen. Anybody with deep pockets is, is so far had an advantage in, in, sh in the shift. That doesn't mean any particular organization, but if you step back behind various specific corporations and you look at who's got the deep pockets, rather than this technology helping the little guy, generally it's supported centralization and it's helped the big guys who have the deep pockets. So in that sense, yes, I think if you look at the specific media organizations, um, you know, they are struggling to stay current in how the consumer wants to relate through this technology and how they want to disseminate or get information and share information. In other words, we're seeing a consumer who, who's much more interested in sharing and connecting than in being told by experts what they should think. And so I think the larger or the traditional media, what you call the traditional media, is struggling. I also think that you know, the traditional media has really been in the business of promoting an official story, not necessarily actually what's going on. And what we saw, particularly with the crash in the in the both stock and, and fixed income markets in 2008, 2009, is sort of shaken confidence. And now people are much more open to getting their news from new alternative sources. So I think traditional media, part of their problem is not the conversion to the technology. I think part is that they really lack credibility because they've earned the disrespect. And uh, that definitely resonates with us here because we definitely are, are looking <laughs> at that from that, that angle. Uh, let me ask well, you another, uh, 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 go ahead. If, if, you look at, if you look at shows like Boom Bust or The Solari Report or um, shows that have really tried to tell people what's going on and keep them plugged into reality as opposed to official reality. You know, the aggregate market share is shifting and it's shifting the content on traditional media. Traditional media is scrambling to catch up with the story. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. But I, I, you know, to me, internet media and new media is grabbing tremendous market share. And I think that's going to continue because I think the the pressures on traditional media to tell the official story. You know, their economics are not the economics of their organization. Their economics are promoting what is in the best interest of, you know, the people who own their shares. So I remember once during the 19, uh, 1990s being frustrated. I had a friend who was a, uh, had been the head of or sort of chief of staff to one media mogul who, who would constantly edit their nightly news stories, you know, because he didn't want to upset anybody in Congress. So. I think we're, particularly during this election cycle, what you're going to see is the American people are very frustrated, and that's going to reverberate back on the traditional media. Well, you know, speaking about frustration, it seems to me as we make this transition that wage growth has been weak. And that has meant, uh, you know, the accumulation of debt in the household sector in particular. And, you know, given the demographic changes, given this accumulation of debt, are you at all worried that we're going to see some uh, instability politically in the developed economies? Well, I think you're seeing instability now. I think you've seen instabilities going on for years. So I don't think it's a matter of coming. I think it's here. Mm -hmm. I don't think wages are stagnating. I think we have used government credit and government money and government regulation to re-engineer the economy and centralize it into sort of much more controlled position. And that's been devastating to the middle class in the developed worlds for a variety of reasons. I don't call that you know, something that just happened in the marketplace. I call it a financial coup d'etat. And I think the, the squeeze on the middle class is absolutely part of that. And more and more, you're seeing the kind of people who are get out and vote are beginning to realize that the system is operating outside of the laws they believe it to be. And that's tremendous frustration, and it's a cause um, with high youth unemployment of real, uh, real political action. So I think the that was Catherine Austin Fitz, president of Solari Incorporated. Time for today's big deal.